this computer. Oh, wait. Yeah. While it's recording. Do you guys have the ability? There we go. Now you should. you should need to, but. All right. Sure yeah. Screen. Share sound. We're good. Let's Share go. Quick time. Let's have a show. Yay. Show time. Bring me everyone. What do you mean everyone? Everyone. Welcome to Everyone Racers, a show designed for the world of low-dollar racing and oddball car culture. Doesn't matter what kind of lemon champ or lucky track dog league you run, SCCA or NASA, we won't discriminate, as long as you drive it hard and built it yourself. Join us each week for tech discussions, tips, tricks, as well as news and notes from the world of amateur endurance racing. And whether it's on the spot, hella sweet, or we're lucky enough and Chrissy gives us just the tip, we're sure you'll giggle a little and learn even less. Everyone reports to the paddock. This is Chris. This is Chrissy. And I'm mental. I let that one go play out the whole time. And we are <laughs> everyone racers. Welcome to a vintage Lego antique car model set episode 329. Now the Lego 329 antique car was a 124 piece classic set released in 1967. Only available in Europe, but the same version as 329 Antique Car was available in the United States. If you are not putting together your rare and valuable and classic toy that looks like this one right here. Looks like a Model T. Mm -hmm. a yeah, exactly. Yeah, generic. Kind of yeah. Couple seats, yeah. top down. Yeah. Yeah, yep. yeah. Generic old timey car, which, you mm -hmm. know, this is 1967 Legos. There are no blocks. That's what you're getting. Blocks and wheels. So if you're not <laughs> putting that together, then you should. I mean, if you are, you should also tell us that you are, because that would be amazing. Send us a picture. I'm impressed. Right? Yeah, 100%. Right. So, uh, oh, I, I bet Jackie you should be has working on suggestions for our E1R bingo card. That would be great. We're, we're, we're going we're gonna to revise it. We've got Moon Trailer. It's still going on there, even though Moon Trailer is gone. But yeah, we need to. It's still funny. It's, it's well, it, yeah, it it, like is, the boat, we still talk funny. about it, so it may just come back around. So you never know because how can yes. you not talk about the moon trailer? <laughs> oh, facts, moon trailer. facts, yes. All right, so Amazing. I hope the uh, I hope that the fine young man who bought that is uh, getting everything he wants out of it and not <laughs> getting injured. You, hope you, hope you hasn't been busted of. for receipt of stolen property or, you know. uh, yeah, from yeah. someone you're not sure who it is in the first place. So there's well, that. Who's going to file, you know, oh, my trailer got stolen. Uh, it's, it's like someone took my half eaten Snickers that I left on top of my car in July. Like... No one's, no one's, no one's reporting. Yeah. <laughs> at least not for one. that trailer at least, yeah. but and well, speaking it probably of was janky... stolen before that too. Like it's been stolen a few times, I think. Exactly. So, yeah. Yes. Speaking of janky trailers, what are you guys working on? Not janky trailers. Mm -mm. No. <laughs> no. We don't have janky trailers. We have nice, well-maintained trailers that it's don't true. cause any problems. It's true. Yes, mm -hmm. we do. Uh, I will. Oh. Paint on go, the. Yeah. Uh, Buy some tractor paint and it is uh very thick we've been out and it doesn't get removed from anything chris i think you might still have some in your arm um and it's uh it, yes it's it, one of those things where you have to when you're painting the interior right. uh mostly just the cage but also the see there you go um <laughs> it's on his arm so we you want to do the cage you want to do the floor and the car is white, so it's being it's white. Um, so yeah, but it just ended up getting getting everywhere. Uh, both of us got haircuts this week, and both of our hairdressers said, "What's this white stuff everywhere?" And I was like, "Oh yeah, that's uh, that's paint." <laughs> this is after multiple washes too. Uh, so um, mine just said, "Is there paint in your hair?" It's like, "Oh yeah." Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, mine might have said, "Is this paint?" But still, like, yes, it was multiple places, and she was like, "Let me just cut this out on a whole bunch of places because uh, it was that thick of paint." So I was helping Chris paint the cage. Two of us painting, it makes it go a little bit faster. So that's what I've been doing. Oh, now, normally we'd really like cool. to spray it. That's what I usually do. But it is January in Pennsylvania, and it was like 15 degrees during the days we were doing this. So we were enjoying our heated, insulated garage to be able to paint at all, but I'm not spraying inside an enclosed space with an open flame. So this is all brush and roller. Except the brush and roller 
with the heat on did not go as well. And this might be a, um, ju not just the tip. It this might could be just, be just a, tip. a tip. I think it, it could be just a tip. tip. We'll All right. Start up. Okay. Okay. All right. Yeah. Never mind. So are Wait we, are it. we, are we looking at it as just the tip is in, you'll be doing it again or learn from our you shall mistakes, see. learn from yeah. our mistakes. That's what the just the tip is. Or know this new thing. Yeah. Okay. Cause yeah. I have tractor paint for the interior of my 914 because I, I, I want something that's durable and tough. I'm not going to have the same temperature problems, but, uh, I, I, I am curious we'll as to the, uh, how it came out with the brush and the rollers rather than using a sprayer. If I'll say oh. our just a tip is going to be different, but I'll say yes, correct. if I could have sprayed, I would have. Yes. And I would again because of the speed and even coverage. And non getting everywhere all over us. And spray gets everywhere just in a different kind of way. Spray yeah. That's why but we got outside. a lot of side. But we got a lot of drips. No, no, no. In inside. So you're, mm -hmm. you know, the rolling on a part of the roll cage makes it so that it drips on everything else. It's all white, but when you look close, just don't look closely is what it comes down to. It looks really nice from a little ways. It does. Away. It does. And, hey, and it was terrible. a lot of work. Clean. Yeah. yeah. Um, I've also was doing other things before we got to painting. I did part of the fire system on the Civic. Just uh, got the underhood stuff done and then a couple of lines run to be ready. But I couldn't put anything else really in until the interior paint is done because it's all attaching to the car. But I spent plenty of time removing things from the interior, like wire harnesses and cables and things so that I could fully clean the, or fully paint the interior. Um, and some snow removal. It snowed twice. Used my not so janky snowblower that tries to kill you. I'll say, yeah, it's, okay. it's not janky at all. It's just the, yeah, the murder oh. blower. Yeah. Uh huh. Stephen yep. King is going to write a story about it. It's going to be great. Yep. Works great. <laughs> That's all. How about you, Metzl? Ah, uh, I've actually been wrenching on a bunch of stuff. Uh, if you remember, uh, my, what? I know my, my, my long standing project of my side by side, my Kawasaki Terriax that won't stay in gear or it grinds. So I finally got the engine removed from that. It is now sitting on the bench because it's integrated uh, case transmission and engine. So I'm going to go through and then see if those- What kind of engine are... is that? Is it like a two-cylinder or like a V-twin yes, or something like that? It is. Okay. It's a, it is a, it's a water-cooled V-twin fuel injected 650, no, 850, 850 uh, fuel, 800 fuel injected. So, cool. yeah. Uh, and, and actually it's, uh, it, it's even integrated the, uh, transfer cases integrated into as well, because I have axles coming out of both end of it that I had to get all of that done. So that is ready. <laughs> and I needed to do that so I could roll the Honda into the garage, which actually we'll talk about on our main topic, uh, did a bid nerds episodes, a couple of bid nerds episodes. One of those Ian from apex adjacent was in town for business. And we drug him out there, had him sit in on an episode of bid nerds. Uh, he and I went and got out and showed him some of the stuff that he, you know, he's not a Vegas person per se, because he doesn't gamble. Uh, but he did enjoy some of the sites. We took in some of the history, found him some of the good bars. And then we went go-karting, uh, on that Friday where he promptly yet again, whooped my ass uh you know got out in front of him and he was still turning faster laps because he was gaining on me and then the second thing he just finally got around me uh and he ended up the the race two races we did he was fifth fastest of the week and this is his first time on the track and then wow. he texted me later he knocked another two seconds off of a a 40 wow. second course so he was in 39 so i think he was like in the top 10 for the month out there okay. cool yeah, exactly. He is, he is a supreme go-karter. And uh, finally, so the SHOT Show is here in Las Vegas, and that is the shooting, hunting, outdoors, um, targeting show. So it is a, a firearm-based uh, event. Some old friends of mine from the military, they have invented a dry firing training aid and they have a booth and I've been getting up in the mornings and going out there and helping them uh, show their wares. They're trying to find a distributor uh, or even some brick and mortar stores that are interested. If you've got an AR and you're interested in a proper dry fire training aid that allows you full actuation of your trigger and your slide for magazine drills, trigger drills, and adds another layer of safety because it prevents the firing pin from going forward. One of the problems with an AR-15 is 
if you charge it and pull the trigger, it, you cannot put it to safe. So you end up having to add a step into your training and that's bad muscle memory. So he's been working on this for a couple of years and I'm, you know, part of our other thing we talked about way back on our new year's goal show is being a better veteran. And I am helping my friend with his oh, veteran owned business. It's fantastic. Yeah. I, I just came from there and I'll, I'll be there tomorrow morning. Super. Yeah. I have no idea any of the things you just said. <laughs> but I like the end part that you are trying to be, this is your, your way to be able to help Absolutely. people. Absolutely. Yeah, that's the part I got. And that's great. Blah, 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 yeah. blah, blah, blah. Blah, blah, blah. If you're an air enthusiast, get a hold of me. I'll show it to you. It's pretty cool. You know. <laughs> yeah. I'm, yep. I'm good with that. Yeah. Dry mm -hmm. pins and safe and stuff. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds good. I got the safe word. Safety. Uh -huh. Yay. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Except it started with AR-15s. I feel like that's like, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. It's, 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 it's... It is. As my screen just scrolled away. If you've ever towed home after a race weekend and you are less than excited about actually driving, in the truck, yeah, which I thought was fun, section of Jalopnik, Logan Carter tells us about an experience with a 2024 Chevy Silverado High Country. This rig was equipped with a Chevy, uh, Chevy's Super Cruise, which is a level two automated driving system that, through a series of complicated technology, allows hand-free sem semi-autonomous driving on specific roadways. Uh, he says, once I got behind the... Oh, Sorry. Once he get behind the wheel of the 2024 Silverado High Country and it set it off, it was eager to set uh, get on the freeway and engage Super Cruise. So I didn't have to be the only one controlling this nearly 50 foot long setup. The Silverado made my job easier by projecting a camera feed from my mirrors onto the infotainment screen whenever I switched on the turn signal, and it superimposed and transpended red rectangle onto the lane next to me to show my footprint with the tra with the trailer included, which is takes the guesswork out of the lane changes while towing. While you're towing, the truck identifies the trailer weight and monitoring engine strain on and other forces. And the Super Cruise adjusts the gap between the truck and vehicle in front of you, accounting for increased braking distances. Won't, won't, what it won't do is make lane changes for you, and that's probably safest for everyone. So, uh, in case you are on the market for a new truck, the cheapest Silverado High Country starts at seventy thousand, and you're gonna probably need multiple upgraded packages to get this auto towing package. But one can dream, can't they? Especially when they start coming off lease in about five years. Yes. Uh, you're on mute, friend. Um, if you wanted to talk to people. <laughs> no, that's fine. Yeah. It's like our next our next tow vehicle will be a, a newer Escalade with that that has this. Seems like a great way to go. Uh, yeah. so much when you are getting yeah. in the car and you have just, especially like hot weekends or really cold weekends and like <clears throat> trying to win. exhausting weekends and stuff. Well, yeah. they're all also exhausing weekends, but I think there's sometimes that they're even more so if we're trying to win and you have, you have a lot to pack and like, there's just some weekends that just take more of a toll. And especially when we have, we know we have eight hours to go and we have to work the next day. Uh, that's just, there's so many times we look at each other and say like, oh, why can't this rig just drive for us? So it's or coming. like, you know, you, you get in there, you're still maybe even a little amped up and then 45 minutes down the road, you just feel the energy suck out of you. Yep. And you know, mm -hmm. and that's, you, you're like, oh man, you know, uh, pound the Red Bull and, you know, try and, and the last, you know, the last 20% of your voyage is always the hardest. And so being able to kind of store some energy for that, our buddy Pantless Matt has a new Denali with that on there. And he thinks, oh, really? Fantastic. Mm. Uh, not the, he, he got the, 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 cause he wanted the super diesel thing on there that they have. So yeah, he, he yeah, I'm not going to sell them out, but yeah, those things are not cheap, but all right. He's a baller you, though, so it's okay. I totally, <laughs> absolutely baller. Yeah, you know the name Carlos Signs and Racing. What you may not know is Carlos Signs Senior is now the oldest champion of the Dakar Rally. Jerry Perez at the Drive tells us how the 61-year-old clinched his fourth title last Friday, giving Audi its first win ever in the legendary 5,000 mile race. Despite not winning a single stage, the entire race, the father of the Ferrari F1 driver made no mistakes in his special construction Audi race contender. Nasser al Adia was quoted as saying the Audis would quote last only three days before going home. Clearly he's seen Audis in limits, but he himself ended up having to retire from the race. Now proving the 
age old uh, or proving the old adage about old age and treachery will always overcome youthful enthusiasm. El Matador, as he is known in his home country of Spain, is turning 62 this April. Has yet to say whether he'll be retired after winning four titles with four different teams, but given that level of success, why would he? Good for him. Yeah, Hell right. Hell yes. Gives Christmas me hope. time. He can ask young Carlos, how many titles do you have? Oh, no. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh. Sorry, sorry, Carlos. The the grown-up Thanksgiving table is only for people with titles. You go sit at the card the oh, table. Oh, <laughs> my goodness. <laughs> hey, you never know. It might be his year. <laughs> it might. It very Maybe. well might. You never know. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yep. Hey, have you ever wanted to race Laguna Seca? Yes. So you, guys, you guys both have. And, oh, uh, yes. I'm, tell, I'm just going to uh, tell yes. everybody uh, the answer is yes. Yes, you do. <clears throat> but you might want to go do that soon if you can, because a number of media outlets have covered the latest in the many years worth of lawsuits of homeowners surrounding the legendary course as filed because, as Brandon Gilligy at Haggerty writes, homeowners perplex as iconic racetrack materializes overnight. Yep. <laughs> lawsuit brought by the Highway 68 Commission calls into question the track's zoning laws. Now, operating since 1957, the lawsuit's claims explicit racing use being not in the track's permits. The county of Monterey owns the track, has spent more than $18 renovating the surface and grounds recently, and um, credited with bringing in about a quarter of a billion dollars in local revenue each year. The suit claims local jerks have, quote, suffered and will continue to suffer irreparable injury as a result of the continued violation of the respondents' zoning laws, end quote. Come on. So absurdity aside, this is usually how bad things happen. So there's still hope, but go drive Laguna before you can't because it oh, really is fun. It is. And it, oh, I feel like this happens with a lot of race, racetracks. We were about to get a racetrack in our hometown and i completely struck a nerve with somebody i didn't expect to and i was like oh the racetrack was gonna be great and they like went off and they're like not if you live there it would have been terrible blah 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 and i was like are you right and so i was very excited so i know that it's real that people that live near tra- racetracks or close to them and if they don't care then oh so it's, it's different between building a new track versus a track being there for a whole long time and then the people right. saying I don't like this noise. When yeah. did you move there? Three years ago. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it did one of the jokes in there. You know, uh, Brandon writes, you know, yeah, holy crap. You know, we uh, we only paid two point seven five million for this house seven years ago, and now with this track just showing up, we'll be lucky if we can get four point two million out of it. No, no, yeah. that's yeah. not how that works. Yeah. <laughs> this has been yeah. there a long time, and it's yeah, very, it's so, it it's so well, it's iconic pretty- too. That, that's true. There really are no damages in this case, technically, like, because no. the value of the property in Monterey County, the values are going up anyway. So who cares? <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah, and- I'm, I'm going to need you to show me on the, on the, your trajectory of your real estate prices, where the bad track touched you. And, you know, <laughs> and the thing is with that track, uh, we were only there once, but it is pretty far off the road. It's pretty secluded right so i then and they have they're really good at noise as well uh they caring about noise ruthless about i'm sorry noise. yes caring yes. about the noise not good at having noise good um making noise good at making yeah. noise no they're good at, at policing the noise yes. and so it is far away from like when you know just thinking about like summit point you could see the church that was hap- happening when we were on track so it's it's things like that you're just like you're you're pretty darn far away. Sure, I'm yeah. sure you could hear race cars. Yeah, absolutely. The difference right? is that people that live at summit near Summit Point don't have any money, and the people that live in Mar in, in right around Laguna Seca. Yes. Do. Well, I, I was saying yes. that the plantation of Laguna Seca is not small. So yeah. yes, you can hear race cars, but it's not like your the 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 church is right on top is next to the track that you can see it from. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. That's and, where and, I'm and, getting and, at. And I would I I think that your point is great. They have been good community partners. The Honda I was driving with uh, Bill and those guys jump timing. And that was enough to get us black flag for noise. Just, you know, a four cylinder Honda running off time. So don't you're, you're, you're not getting any rough, you know, and I'll tell you what, if you're worried about your $4 million house, give it to me. I'll trade you mine right here. <laughs> There's no racetrack anywhere near me. And, and, and I'll go live in your place. Sounds great. 
Yeah, probably, and then the houses I'll are sleep. probably about the same size. <laughs> I will, <laughs> I will sleep in your bathtub so I can go racing there. That sounds. Oh yeah, that will totally. You, you thought you had trouble with noisy neighbors until I moved in. You know, it'll, <laughs> it, I will, yep. I will. It will absolutely You're gonna, look like the sorry, for party rock. Sorry for party. <laughs> yeah. Yes, that's what's happening I, right there. I will get a permit to have <laughs> zebras just for that. <laughs> Uh, okay, let's move on. The land speed citation. Those three words don't make sense together unless you are on Racing Junk because racingjunk.com, those words return a link to this 1981 Chevy Citation land speed car. It is a 2.8 liter V6 normally aspirated with a comp roller cam, roller lifters, shot peened crank, H beam rods, forged pistons, ported float heads, custom intake and a Holly race 390 CF M4 barrel carb. The chassis duo in front and front uh, at front tires are put out a 400, excuse me. That's a larger number, 259 <laughs> horsepower and 389 foot pounds of torque. That's astounding out of a boat anchor of a motor. Seriously. Uh, it's right? brilliant. It's got a get rag five speed with a po uh, posy three sets of Goodyear. What? Oh, with the posy, excuse me. Three sets Posy. of Goodyear posy posy. It's a posy. It's oh, posy. posy. It's a posy. Uh, a three sets of Goodyear front runners, uh, a Simpson harness, a full coal four, a, of course, a full roll cage fuel cell Kirky. Oh, Kirky. Mm -mm. Uh, it sits on a four corner airbags. Oh, I love airbags for a two. Firefox 6.5 pound fire suppression bottles. Wow, two fire suppression bottles? Well, what? at 150, it takes a lot longer to stop. So oh, if you're on fire, like you need to do something about gracious. it. That, and and you know, while the Kirky is probably uncomfortable, you're only in it for like a mile. <laughs> yeah. You know, and but because you're in it for a mile, you're a mile away from anyone that's going to respond to you on fire. All right, all right, all right. I buy you. All right, so, so all everyone right. wants to know how fast is. Okay, hold on. They, right, I'm getting there. The car has run five times at Bonneville with a, tra a trap speed of 152.7 miles an hour in a citation. It's in Columbus, Montana. Five grand. Seriously, it's amazing. What? It's got to be five grand in that engine. E yeah, yeah, absolutely. And uh, and and uh, it, they say they're selling it because it got classed out of this the where it was running. So mm. you know, you just move it the next mods and dude, seriously, you, that has to be the fastest Chevy citation in existence. Ow. Yeah. And built even Holy ones crap. that have fallen off a cliff. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I feel wow, bad wow. though, because this is an amazing car and they've got, you know hundreds of hours in there and they clearly take the safety very seriously, but they would not use code pod 23, get that racing junk pro membership. So there's only one picture and it is oh, it's a good picture. Come on guys. That's a great car. That is an, I want to see car. more, right? Cause like there is just so much to see. I feel oh, like man. to sell that you probably should have just bought the membership even if at full price, yeah, but anyway, spend the 20 something dollars and get you your right. pro member. Actually, you send it to me guys. If you're listening land speed citation owner guy, we'll list it for you. Cause we have a pro membership and we'll put it in there and sure. put all the pictures you want because you get all the pictures, you get five ads and 50 photos and you know, who's watching it. And then you get videos. You could save your favorite ads and all these bigger thumbnails and a racing junk store discount. Why would you not? Come on, come on. Yeah. Amazing. Totes. Okay. Yep. It's the Serpent Feedback. All right. It is. On the, oh, wait, on the YouTube, Michael K said, hey, uh, tabs with hold big enough holes big enough for hooks on the ratchet Ooh. straps to hold down the cool seat shirt cooler. So even your dimmest driver can figure out. And this is in response to our, our cage <laughs> edition episode. That's a great idea. Yeah. Yep. Stuff you can uh, do in the off season to make your cage yep. better. And uh, uh, I feel like that dimmest driver is aimed at someone that is just. <laughs> oh, he had someone in mind without a doubt. Uh -huh. uh, a product design went a step further on the jack point and welded a one inch diameter tube horizontally that stuck uh they stick three quarters inch of a tube and bolts into as jacking points and jack stand points. That's good. Wow. There, that's the commitment. Uh, I said, but we covered most of it. So that's good. Yeah. Now, James M popped in there and said, I am debating between straight door bars and the bent 
or the S bent bars because the main hoop is going to be behind the B pillar. So he can't do the uh, single bend bar style because you end well, up with kind of an S and that, that uh, well, that'll get you, you rejected. Might be able to. That's where Hang I was. On, you yeah, might be able Chris to. has got this mm -hmm. because we we've done, we've done this. It depends on how far back that is in the B pillar, but we've notched the B pillar a little bit so that the bar kind of goes through part of the B pillar. You can actually weld it to the B pillar a bit at that point. If you do it, or instead of doing a full S bend, you can have it kind of come straight and then just do a bit of a bend and then go out to the middle bend. So it's not a full like S bend NASCAR one, but it's, it's, it's half of way. It's a figure a smaller bend is safer in doing that, but look into see how, how much of the, would you have to notch it in the B pillar to do that? Give it a try. This is worth an email to John Pagel. Uh, that's exactly what I was going to say. Absolutely show you how to do it smart, safe, and affordably. Yeah. I was going to say the same. Totally. Uh, Tim Tim B likes to write rewrite our, um, our <laughs> intro our uh, what do you call that descriptions Summaries, of our shows. Episode, yep. Yes. In this episode, Chris drops the mic. Chrissy subtly tells Chris it's too cold in the house, and Menzel does the safety dance. Oh, and Jeff makes headway on the garage, but still doesn't make any progress on the arc. <laughs> he, he's true. Oh. He's right. Oh. Uh, oh. And Tim continued, though. Seriously, though, thing is to change on a second build. He said, make the cage as big as possible. Not only is it safer, but makes everything you need to do in the car easier once it's installed. Yep. Add surgical tubing to keep belts out of the way when they're unbuckled. I mean... Tim, have you listened to some of our caging shows? Because it have, certainly has sounds he, like or has have. he driven in our some of our cars and noticed yeah, all of the great absolutely. things that we do? Right. Yes, yes, yes. Yep. Uh, dealing with a team that has children and luxury sized mantles is tricky, but it's not good with some forethought. Seat positioning should be as far back with some tilt. Use sliders to angle up as you move forward. Again, he's listened to our install a seat episode. Uh, add a steering hub spacer if distance from the wheel is an issue. That's a good one. Mark your lap belt webbing for different drivers. Oh, that oh that's a new Put one. On it. Uh, install two compatible sub belts so the buckle placement is correct for the different drivers. That's a great one, too. What? Uh, if you need a big ass seat for your driver's big torso, uh, look at a custom seat like the INDI seat, or they've had those like foam kits in a, in a garbage bag that. You, know, you sit in and makes a nice mm -hmm. little impression for you, which is nice. Uh, he says, when incorporating gussets, be sure to add mounts for your speakers. It's a great <laughs> way. Gets them up out of the way and helps your fellow racers cheer your amazing for playlist. Oh. Hashtag, hashtag sorry for party racing. Hashtag I heart douche stamps. Oh, I, I, I uh, hashtag I love timber. That's what it comes down to. Yes, everyone does. Yes, everyone loves yes. And I know. Oh, I'm so excited. <laughs> All right, and it has been a while, but as you alluded to, Chrissy posted a what you working on. Now, Rob B was just getting the live stream set up working for Barber. Good which is in job. two weeks, right? Yeah. John A was uh, working on his motorhome fridge, almost cut an access hole on the side of the RV to remove the heating element. Mm. So I'm tired serious. of fighting with this thing. I'm yes, let me just a hole cut a hole. Later. Cut a hole. Been there. Yep. Uh, David E. said, we're still transferring the guts of the new old stock rod shift Z-Tech contour transmission into our focus transmission cases in order to finally get five non-grinding gears. Ooh. I can hardly wait to have a usable second gear for turn 17 at pit race. <laughs> <Absolutely>. <laughs> Andrew S. was sorting bike parts and hoping for a negative COVID test oh, soon. Feel wah, wah. better soon, Andrew. Wah, wah. Hopefully he feels better by the time he's listening to this. Glenn F. was saying he was wiring a second ECM into the S10 because one isn't enough. Dom domination is assured, probably. Two ECUs? Wow. Ooh. Uh, Greg S. is using the vintage car as a heart-lung machine for an Alfa Romeo two-liter race motor. Don't try this at home. <laughs> uh, Nathan S. was, quote, modeling shit. Uh, he's actually doing a very thorough, thought-out gauge panel. Mm, that's nice. Uh, Bill F. was working on the Mini Cooper prep for uh, One Lap of America. Honda Fit was uh, dealt, dealing with some deer damage and a radio upgrade. Albert W. getting ready to install a painless wiring system, trying not to freak out. Well, good thing you bought a painless one. I, you know, they don't sell many of the, this is going to be really terrible <laughs> brand wiring. At least system. it doesn't say it on the front of the package. <laughs> yeah. Uh, our buddy Greg was, quote, working on 
Mustang misery, but I think we meant misery. No, Spelling I think he spelled, <laughs> spelled it that way. This is literally copy from Facebook. So this yeah. is actually how he yes. spelled oh, it. Oh, no, I know he spelled it that way. I just think he misspelled I'm, it. <laughs> I mean, he wasn't sober. Probably not. Watching and then Bruce, Bruce had, I think, work, right? I think Bruce, there was another trail of things that I deleted from this whole thing of Bruce <laughs> saying, well, it's getting better. And blah, blah, blah. yes, anyway, Corey D was finishing doing finishing touches on his GM, GD BMW. He's filling holes in the firewall, adjusting the harness, straightening a wiring, a little annoying mis miscellaneous stuff that takes 10 times longer than you were always planning for. Mm -hmm. But because you do them, Corey, your cars are good. Uh huh. Always well annoyingly. Yep. Yes. Uh, Sasha is working on designing a cage and a safety setup for a car that needs a wheelbase waiver. Oh, Woo! that's going to be interesting. Woo! The roof on. Mm -hmm. I says, what brings me to a question? What is the model of that very nice seat the Civic has? Great mm -hmm. to ask, Sasha. We always run the OMP brand HTE-R seat because it fits everyone really well. It's comfortable. It has a reasonably sized halo hoops. It's reasonably priced. I've been buying them from a place in Ireland over the years. And even yeah. with shipping, it was way cheaper with the exchange rate than getting them here. Uh, still FIA too. rated. One of our, there's two models. There's the regular HTER and there's the HTER 400, which has smaller halo tabs. And we've got that in the RX-7. We had it in the Z in the RX-7 because of the way the car tapers as it goes to the roof where the civic and miles have room for the larger ones now uh we may not have a link to the irish one but we will certainly have a link to that seat for anyone else who is listening and wants a very good place to spend a few hours yeah it's durable uh, it's holding up well and it, it get, you're not hurt after a couple hours in it and you feel fine no it's lovely except yeah. you have here's here's one sorry to interrupt you have to wear pants you do have to wear pants. <laughs> when you don't, oh, when I'm you out. don't, I'm when, out. You, oh, when you don't wear it. pants, it's miserable. <laughs> oh. Well, the Civic one is it the same one as the one that's same in the one. Mazda? They're all the same. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, have to wear pants. Not great if you don't wear pants. Just saying. Uh, it, it just you, you can't leave everybody in suspense. Why? Why? Is okay, it fine. I'm fine, 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 fine. <laughs> so the one time I drove the Mazda from my work in in uh, Potsdam, Pennsylvania to NJMP, which was probably it's about two hours, we'll say. Uh, it was much longer than that because I sat in, in Philly traffic on a Friday afternoon in the summer. I drove, uh, and so it has no air conditioning. So I drove the car from work to the track. I brought a cool suit. I brought, and so I brought my, like a pair of workout shorts because I knew it was literally 97 degrees and I knew I was sitting in traffic. There is no lies here. This is exactly what happened. I brought my, my igloo cooler with full of ice into my work. I, uh, to keep it cool in the AC. Then I put it into my car, still have ice in it. And then I put my racing sh cool shirt on and a pair of workout shorts and a pair of sneakers and workout socks on because I knew that I was going to be sweating in 97 degree heat. Uh, I didn't wear, I wore workout shorts and the seat chafed my, ate my legs apart because <laughs> it was so uncomfortable trying to clutch in traffic in the heat. You have to wear pants. It's a and this is because it's a grippy, breathable material, and but the grippiness lovely. on it, which is great holding you in place when you're race driving, lovely. not so good on exposed thighs. Yeah, that's all. But it, okay. I think it does make it a lot more durable too. So yeah, it's yep. yeah. Wear pants. Um, cool. So all right, uh, Matt F was trying to get his damn bird back together. I'm sure it's going to be great. Uh, Jim B said he's doing an M112 valve cover gasket set. Mercedes, yeah. Eric K says today was gig day. So besides snow removal, no car stuff. Too cold. He's just playing playing mm. music. All Correct. Right. Do you know who should not have to be doing her own snow removal? And I have a sneaking suspicion she doesn't. Uh she does no, I some. Bet she does. Yeah. She does some. Yeah, they do some. They do their own. Well, I figured they meaning him, but yes. Uh but yes, Chrissy's mom deserves to sit in the house and be warm and comfortable when there's snow removal going on. Yes. Agreed. Hi, mom. 
Hi, mom. Sorry, we missed of, you a couple of your family. I did see something your sister posted about, you know, when you're debating because it's cold and you have to get the snow off the car, but you also realize that after you've strapped in the two kids, this is the only time you're going to have to yourself is standing outside the car <laughs> while you're just trying to reset your brain. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes, it's probably un unnecessarily accurate. Yes. Uh, but hi, mom. We haven't said you hi to you in a couple, sorry, yes. couple weeks. Hello, Chrissy's mom. All right, it's been a time. Project Car Investigation. So if you are the or even a car person in your circle, you're probably going to end up with someone else's project. And I'm going to say at least once, but I feel like everybody right now is looking at their player going, what do you mean just the once? Uh, I know you guys have been given cars. I've been given cars, you know, and some of these are end up with as many strays as you do somehow. I think no, mostly it's because I'm better don't. at saying no, no, no. <laughs> we don't. <laughs> but you, so this but is going to be great. Do... I'm going to do this and this yes. and this and, then and then it's scrap. not. <laughs> right, then scrap. Wait, what, no. do you, what do you mean having to work 40 hours a week and sleep and go out and hang, you know, and, and, then... and be married doesn't mean I have time. Oh, um, but you guys still admit you still get one every now and again, don't you? Hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. all right. And so this episode is inspired by recent events and is how do you make progress on someone else's project if you don't even know where to start? And it's worse, especially as we were going to talk about in this case, where if it is a stagnated project that has passed through a few mystery owners and has little, if any documentation, and usually the parts that are pulled off are all thrown in the hatch or they get moved around or the box rotted or this happened or that happened. So they you literally guaranteed to have plastic totes <laughs> guaranteed. Yes. Well, I've gotten them without, and I've gotten them with like crappy printer paper boxes that oh, have started to yeah. fall apart. And you know, what screws have fallen out of that? What's going on to that one? So if you guys don't know, I, two years ago, I came into possession of a oh, two maybe, years ago. Actually, I think it might, it might've even been longer. It, it might be wow. some, yeah. sometime, sometime my hair was some a lot ago. shorter. Uh, I was given an 86 Honda civic SI uh, that has an engine swap. And it was from a friend who had gotten it for next to nothing and he needed to move. So he did, he wanted it to go someplace. And I finally, as part of our new year's goals episode, I'm trying to make progress and figure out what this is. So that involved all the getting rid of the moon trailer and shuffling cars around and getting rid of things, bringing it home. So I could actually figure out what the heck this car is what the heck I'm going to do with it before I just come after it with a sawzall. Do not do that. No and, matter what, and, Hansel, I've seen this car now. You yes. cannot sawzall it. You cannot scrap it. <laughs> you have to at least pass it along to somebody. And ideally at the end of this episode, yes, at the end of this episode, you will feel as good as I did at the end of Saturday about your project car and at least have a path laid out before you. And the first thing in there, Chris, that you wrote, I wish I would seen years ago. And that is with this kind of thing. It's not a project. Stop thinking of it like a project. You have just been given a puzzle. You need to use that mindset to start off. I need to solve to, not even solve this puzzle. I just need to understand this puzzle. Is this a beach scene with 500 pieces? Or is this one of those ones that's just white and a thousand pieces and you want to murder yourself? Or is it the ones for the kids that are like six pieces? <laughs> like, it's frog. This is our, right, frog. Exactly. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> but figure it out. That's where you're coming from to start. Mm -hmm. And really, like what you do with any puzzle just start looking for a bit. Just yeah. stare at it. Grab a beer and just look around. A beer and a flashlight. What do you see? Look for things that are going to be real problems and look for surprises and you might find things. And let's, we'll keep using your Civic as an example. Some things that I noticed as you were looking around, uh, when you 
poked a boroscope down the cylinders. Oh, those pistons are not stock. They are definitely not stock pistons. Someone's been in there, you know, heating things up a little bit. Yes, that, that nice? those are those are some high performance pistons in there. I I like your puzzle analogy because also, you know, first thing you do when you get a puzzle, you dump the box. Now, don't do that figuratively unless you've got something to do to clean it up. But you know, pull everything out and unpack it when you're having that observation beer to stare at it and figure out what you're going to do. You need to know everything, not just the car, but what's in, what's in all those plastic totes and, and printer paper boxes. Yeah. And while you're doing that, clean things up a bit because there's probably acorns, you know, bird's nests, snake hides or whatever you call them yeah, the definitely snake the eggs yeah, yeah right you're right you know who knows what in all those clean it up a little bit and try to identify the parts lay them all out see what you have um mm -hmm. Because in some of it, you'd probably say, well, this is junk. Like, this is clearly just like trash that fell in this box. Or is this three inch stub of hose that's straight? Uh, no, I'm not going to use that again. Yeah. Get rid of this, that. this, this bucket of empty beer cans. I think I know how this project didn't get finished. Mm -hmm. So clean stuff out. And hey, who knows what you might find? There's, there's usually treasures somewhere in all of this wonder. Mm hmm. Especially if it came from, you know, impound yards, and there's especially treasures. <laughs> you know, who knows? I I have I have bought actual race cars from impound, and yes, that was there was always a ton of fun stuff with that one. Yeah. Um, and and so you you you've cleaned the car. The Civic I did power wash it because I knew it had Oklahoma dirt, Arizona dirt, Nevada dirt on it. Uh, and I vacuumed everything out of it. So I just wouldn't feel gross touching it. Cause if you're yeah, trying to get some momentum on something, yeah, you don't want something you don't want to touch. Yeah, so great suggestion. Yeah. So you get on that one. Um, my thing is uh, I am not smart like Chris and Chrissy. So every time I unpack any of this kind of stuff, if I'm doing it right and I don't get in a rush and I don't get excited thinking I could do something right away, you know, cause I'm trying to get it back on the road in a week. Uh, I, I take lots and lots of notes and I write things down and I write them down in words that make me, you know, understand not, oh, that's the uh, flux capacitor inner cooler hose. I'm like weird shape S cooler hose thingy with clamp on left end. And then if I do identify it and I know what it is too, I have painter's tape and a Sharpie to do that. And if it's got the screws that it needs to have on there, you put all of it in a clear Ziploc bag and you write on the Ziploc bag what that is. Uh, another good thing is now, totally. yeah, the the Glad plasticware and the days when Tupperware was an expensive investment are gone. You can go to the dollar store and buy like the Glad sandwich bins or the soup containers, all that kind of stuff for nothing and grab a bunch of those and have your bolts and bins and parts stuff that if you know what it is, you can go ahead and get that labeled right away. And then you can write descriptive things on the other ones so that when you realize, Ooh, I do need an S flunky hose bend on this tube with a clip on one end. I know where I put that. So it's, it is counterintuitive, especially if your brain works like I do and you get really, really excited about the prospect of what you could do, but force yourself to slow down, write it all out, put it in bins, label them because you're going to go looking for it later. Mm -hmm. And take pictures while you have it out, because once it goes back in a bin or you don't remember <laughs> or you're trying to figure out what it is, then you can show someone a picture of it or later on you say, oh, I do have one of those. Oh, oh yeah, it's right there. Okay. Oh, where is that? And you dig, 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 and you can find it again. And yeah. and with a like if you've upgraded your phone ever, you should have an old crappy phone in your garage that literally exists to do nothing but take pictures and videos of when your friend's about to set themselves on fire. Yeah. But just having having old phone is easy. And so you should take as many pictures as you could stand. And after you've done it. Now you got to figure out, you've, you've, or everything, you've got everything, you've got it apart, you got it cleaned, you got it spread around, you, you've looked at it, you got to start figuring out what do you have here? Like, what, what is this? And this is, can be anything from, uh, well, actually, and I'll add one bit to the last part. And so I'd say group things that look similar together. 
Mm -hmm. makes it easier to find later maybe they start to make sense. like all hoses at once or you're like yeah. i think the cooling you know, system like if hose i need a hose like i need a hose where do i have my hoses they're right here here are my hoses they're in yep. this bucket or box or whatever it is yeah that helps that yeah, so you got to figure out what are these yeah, things yeah. are yeah and like mental perfect. shows me this this really weird looking thing and it, i used to work on these cars these 86 civics 20 something years ago i knew everything about them i did every, all this stuff uh, it's been a long time though. It shows me this really <laughs> weird looking thing. It's got a gear, a little gear on the bottom and it's about six inches tall and it's got a uh, open hole in the very top and then two like other hose nipples coming out of the, the top of the side and they're different sizes. And I'm looking for a second and I say, Nina, oh, I don't really remember. And then I remember, oh, that's a variable speed sensitive power steering hose valve. So oh, the, like, okay, it, it, as luck would have it, I I have our conversation from that, so that way nobody can okay. completely. Yeah, so the the one on the left is okay. This hold really... on, there's a picture. Tell the picture. Yep, there's a picture. It's so the the two on the right are our later speed sensors from OBD One Civic. So those aren't interesting. And the one on the far left is this big aluminum thing, and you can't even see the part that has the the hydraulic fittings on it. But it's for the you know in the eighties they tried to do speed sensitive power steering to change the assist and there was a it ran off the speedo gear drive and the top is where the speedo cable comes out and the sides is where it restricted the the power steering pressure through it anyway so like that kind of stuff I don't know what I have but you can start looking figure it out and actually I would say that Google uh, image search take a picture of it and give it a try with some stuff say what what is this. And it, Google will just it look has up gotten pictures and, and alarming. Everyone's worried about AI. The Google image ability to recognize these things is pretty impressive. Yeah. Um, and then keep going and identifying stuff. Like, you know, if you have any idea what this stuff is from, like, is there a post it note written on the back of a cocktail napkin in the car or something? <laughs> if you have any idea who you got it from and you can ask them whatever you can ask them, ask them to get anything that's good mm -hmm. um and it, it, it all goes here. into the, yeah it goes to that documentation on that um and then understanding you know obviously what kind of car but what year what trim level because sometimes there are substantial mechanical and frame differences from one to the other and if you don't know that or you know, start narrowing it down to an era because then that makes your internet search that comes up next or you start poking around in the marquee specific Facebook groups or Reddit channels. And I've had some luck with VIN decoders. Do you have one issue that you have the car chassis, but often what you're dealing with is which engine is in which car, which may be that there's easy swaps. So you end up with... Mm -hmm. These these yep. kind of issues, and and those kind of things, if you see part numbers on anything, take a picture, look up the part number, and yes. you can do that. Just Google the part number itself. If you know the make, try that. Rock Auto has a just a part number search, and try that. It helps for aftermarket stuff. It at least point you in the right direction. And say what is this. Worst case, you go into one of those Facebook groups or Reddit threads or something and post, here's a part number, this thing on this project that I've got. You'll get like 12 snarky responses. But in there, <laughs> but like, you might ah, get one search helpful. Noob. <laughs> yeah, search noob. Helpful. But one of them go, ah, I remember back in my day. That this is Chris. <laughs> yes. Chris will say on this this thread. Yes. Well, I, you know, gearheads are snarky, but also I think it is in our nature to be helpful. And so, Find that expert. If you know someone that knows anything about these, try it. There's this wonderful thing called FaceTime or Skype or whatnot that yeah. lets you. <laughs> this is yes. the thing I'm looking at. What do it do? Do I need this? If you've got someone that has more knowledge than you about it, give it a shot. Even if they don't know everything, they can point in the right direction or tell you some of the things totally. and get you moving in the right way. And they'll probably help you. It's a nice way yeah. to spend half an hour just helping somebody out. Yep. You feel and good so, about it. yeah, even if, if, if you're not getting the hundred percent solution, even if you just get a 5% solution, that's 5% more than you had. And it goes back to yeah. the puzzle mentality versus project mentality. That's fantastic. two more things. It, it's, did you ever play that game Riven back in the day? Anybody? 
Yeah. Oh God. It's, it's, well, uh, it's explain right it. Riven was one of the very first, it was in like in the mid nineties. It was like a, a, not quite open world, but close, um, like point and click. Like I want to go here and you click on the path and you go down the path and you get to this door and there's this puzzle in the door. You're like, I don't know how to do this puzzle, but the clues to make the puzzle are somewhere down the Island over by the water. There's a drawing on the cave wall that looks kind of like it. And, you know, things like that. Right. That's kind of what this is like. You got to, you got to, and, and that's why you're, all these things you're saying make sense. Like keep track, get notes, do pictures, figure it out, knowing that you're going to get a clue somewhere that doesn't, something that's going to be, not going to be written right on it, but use the clues that you're going to find to solve puzzles later. Mm -hmm. It's a different mentality. It's not, I'm just going to fix this thing. It's, you got to get the puzzle sorted out before you can fix it. If, Back before like Motor Trend was a a television network, if you wanted to watch car building shows, your only choice was Spike, the Spike Network. And they would basically, you know, the 30 minute infomercials from, you know, trucks to hot, you know. Uh, Chris it, is going to go install these cylinder heads on our Chevy <laughs> over there. Well, we're going to tell you about this Edelbrock carburetor. Oh. Tell them more about that Edelbrock carburetor. Oh, well, the Edelbrock carburetor got seven, seven barrels. Right there, right there, oh, look, right they're there. done. Oh yeah, Chris oh, is done with that yeah. cylinder head over there. How are we doing? Ready to start that up? Yeah. All right. And while I've been talking to you, my co-host Steve took care of seven thousand hours of body work, and we managed to paint the. Car. <laughs> Look how but beautiful it is. What I, What I did like about that is when they would bring in a project cars, one of theirs, uh, they would always show like the terrible boogered up welds, full of like welding wire and all this other kind of stuff, to give you a sense of how bad this project was. And you can do the same thing. We've talked about this when we're buying a pre-owned car, which is why I like to buy my cars from Chris and Chrissy, because you're not just buying the car, you're buying the owner. <laughs> so true. And I mean, we didn't come home with you, so there's that, but you know. <laughs> but cool. you know, what do you know about the person that had this car before you? Uh, you know, if Corey Dickman gave you a project car, because he couldn't figure it out. You're, you're probably in over your head. I'm just going to throw wrong. that one yeah. out. Right <laughs> now. Just, nope. Nope. <laughs> no, no, just start from scratch. But, uh, you know, but if you know, Oh, he's a V8 person and this is a four cylinder, um, you know, did they touch it? Did they do anything with it? Or did they just run out of time kind of a deal? And then, you know, who do they hang out with? Now, I wasn't surprised to see the high-performance pistons in this Honda because I got this car from my buddy Chris Mills who had to move to Chicago. And Chris was a busy guy. He, he was uh, dating his now wife and, and just he had his priorities different. And he never got a chance to do anything with this car. But I knew he's big in the Honda world. He used to actually be one of the judges for the Nopi, uh, Nopi Nights and, and that sort of thing. So he knew Honda people. And... I expected this car to have some Honda mojo to it. And, you know, he, he knows his hacks and he knows his talented mechanics. And what do you, you know, maybe, you know, something about the people, or maybe you just know what hack mechanics look like. Maybe if you've got some expertise and everyone always does this one thing that breaks apart and you go and check that part and it's not broken. Maybe you've got, you know, someone who knew what they were dealing with. Are they just inexperienced? Uh, or, you know, all the above. Yep. <clears throat> um, yeah, you, you just, it's all part of the puzzle part. All mm -hmm. right. So now you've, you've gotten this far there when you're doing a puzzle, sometimes you need to use additional outside resources too. And what was the resource when a lot of these cars that we're talking about was built Were built, excuse me, the resources were books. That's what we had. We had the library, we had books, yeah. we had things like that. Do not underestimate the value of this original factory service manual. I'm not talking about the Chilton or the hands. I'm talking about the real deal one. For lots of cars, you can find PDF scans of these just available for download that some enthusiast has put up there. I use these extensively. I have one for the Mazda, I have one for the Civic. I, I, you, I rewired half the Z. And that was all from an online scan of the factory wiring diagram. Great, super helpful. 
Uh, I, if you're a Honda Racing Line member, you get access to their entire tech library, which is incredibly helpful for anything Honda after 1990, because that's when they started cataloging all this stuff on their racing line. So this 86 Civic that Mental's got, not so helpful. I couldn't really mm -hmm. find anything. I could find all kinds of troubleshooting tips they gave the dealers in like the mid 90s about like the sunroof leaking and which transmission fluid to use and all kinds mm -hmm. of crap like that. But I couldn't find the, the later so stuff. Like, helpful. Like for the like 05 Civic Accord element stuff that I've been dealing with with the K-Swap, I can give you every single pin out for every single plug on every single wire in the entire car. And it's really was helpful when I was mixing and matching all kinds of stuff. Um, but find it. And if, if it's an old car, go on eBay. So Metzl, go on eBay and look for a Helms manual, H-E-L-M-S. That was the company that made them for Honda for an 86 Civic and an 87 or 80 or 86 Integra. Find those. It will absolutely help you figure some stuff out, especially when it comes to wiring and plugs and things like that. Mm -hmm. Yep. And that brings us to a perfect point that Chris touched on before, but own a friend. Um, it's always fun when old people go, eh, what a modern world we're living in. But I, cannot overestimate the importance of being able to FaceTime. So Chris had to look at my horribly disorganized garage as I walked around this car and stuffed my phone into like nooks and crannies and to be like, I could hear just a little left, a little bit left. Okay. Yeah. no, nope, That's what I needed to see right there. That's this plug, that plug, you know, that, that kind of thing. That's, that's where this is going to go. But it also just looking at it, uh, when I had pictures of the engine and I had pictures of the car and part number on the engine, Chris was able to identify that this particular 86 has gotten about, I'd say three quarters of the way through what was a very popular Integra swap. So you took the first generation Integra brakes, suspension, and engine and put it under the lighter Civic or CRX. I would have never figured that out. I had one of these back in the day. I did that swap. I bought a $300 87 Integra that was actually really a fine car. I don't know why they sold me for $300, but it, they did. <laughs> and I swapped all of it into my 86 CRX and that car was a blast. And quite a bit of parts of those two cars ended up going on and winning the GRM challenge in 2006 on, in Hong Noor's hands, for example. So I spent a lot of time with these cars back in the day that helped. Mm -hmm. So that's the, yeah. the whole phone a friend aspect of it or phone a friend of a friend or whatever, but yeah, get on there yeah. and then kind of use that FaceTime stuff. And when that happens, you, you, you gotta have to curb your ego. Like, well, do you know what this is? Your answer is not, of course I know what that is because you're calling me. Did Chris help. talk to you like that? <laughs> no, not at all. Because I might, when he offered to, he's like, if you want to FaceTime and go over that Honda and I'm like, let me finish my coffee and I will absolutely put on shoes and we will go do this now. Uh, Vicky was waiting on us to finish up while we were doing that because we had lunch plans and she comes out and still sees me under the car holding my phone and she hears your voice and you'll wait, what is someone else? In? Oh, never mind. And she just went back inside because it was going to be a little bit. But he doesn't while. say like, <laughs> He's probably more excited because he found a part of like, ooh, ooh what, do you, what, do you, what do you have, right? So it's good for both parties. There, it usually mm -hmm. there, there was some joy when he realized the panard bar had actually been put in properly and the uh, frame wasn't rotting away. And Well, seeing an 86 CRX or 7 <laughs> that didn't have rust in the three spots, <laughs> Just... that, all of them that I've ever seen, <laughs> yeah. even since they were... 12 making years little old, hearts rusting right <laughs> that it warmed the cockles of my heart and that is why you cannot scrap that car you have to make sure to move it along if when you're done with it however you're done with it it cannot be scrapped all yeah, right we're not there yet no well so, it can't be scrapped but that does segue nicely into this uh next point go for it chrissy oh decide on your goals figure out what you want to do with it that makes that really drives what you're going to, what, what are you going to do? You want to make it a race car? You want to make it a street, street drag? Do you want to, what do you want to make, what do you want to do? I think it's even then, more than that. Okay. Are you just trying to save it? Like this a-hole who had it before is one of those, I, it, if it gone by five o'clock, I'm going to scrap it. 
or <laughs> that's mental, know, right? No, I'm just kidding. Some sometimes it is actually. Um, <laughs> but, <laughs> or or is it something you get because you're really interested in, and you want to make it a project? Or is it something you're like, I don't know, I'll give it a shot. Let's see what happens. To figure that out because that changes how much you're going to work on it and how far you're going to go with it. Or is it a how car much you, you care? Right. Is this one? I've wanted one of these since I was 12 years old and I have the time and the resources to do a full out restoration. Very that's, different that's than, than I want to get it running and see what, it, see what it is and see if I like it. Mm. Which is, it's a good approach from it. And I'm glad that this is down here in the middle of it because walking into that garage Saturday with you on FaceTime, I had a different plan and a different goals than by the time we finished that conversation. Uh, yeah. Because not completely understanding what it was, I did not have a complete frame of reference. I did not have the same level of uh, cataloging and organization that I had starting out. And I didn't know what I had. So some of my initial plans, not entirely, I'm not going to say unrealistic, but they weren't, they weren't what's best for the car, what was going to be easiest. And so, yeah. I, I came out of that with a different set of goals. Uh, I think it's going to be like a fun little street autocross car. And then we'll see what happens afterwards. But I shouldn't have to invest a whole lot of money into having something that fun. No. Yeah. And those cars are a ball to drive. Mm -hmm. You can just hammer them and you're not going all that fast. <laughs> but it's so fun. Uh, and, and so once you figure out your goals, you know what you're so we're, Go back to all this, what we talked about. You looked at it. You figured out the like you've got bits and boops and pieces everywhere. You have some idea what you have. You've got some documentation. You've got some goals. Now you can make a plan. Only now, after you've done all this, can you make a plan? What are you going to do? We're talking and, about plan, you know, lay it out on a timeline, be realistic. And it doesn't necessarily have to be date responsive, but certainly, you know, I need this thing to work before I can you know, mm -hmm. get this thing to work before it can drive, before it can do that. And, you know, well, make engine run, make yeah, engine well, run. Yeah. That's it. Be methodical about your plan once you start it, because mm -hmm. you can't just dive into it. Just, I'm going to fix this first thing I see. I'm going to move it and, and just go like that. That that's enthusiasm is great, but that's not going to help you with your plan. So first off, if you've got something that doesn't like move and that's really a problem, We'll start with that. Like, can you, can you get it like the suspension together so that it rolls so you can move it around a little bit? Oh, that might be really helpful. Um, is, is all that done? It, it needs to run. Okay, great. Make it run. Um, you know, does it like, what is the thing that's really a problem? Is it just strewn entirely and take around your entire shop and garage and trailer and you just need to get the parts semi co-located. Okay. Great. Start putting things together that are big and obvious. Like the tackle the the low hanging fruit to make it a, less of a problem in your life. This is more of a problem it is in your life. The less like you're going to work on it, and less like you're going to fix it. Mm -hmm. So yes. start there. And the and more likely you are to get angry at it and realize that it's yeah. become resentful. Yes. So to so pick those part pick those things off first in your plan and work from there. Like, so for your car, for example, mental, I, my suggestion to you is put it up in the air and solve like the suspension and brake and kind of stuff first, because that lets you get it back on, on the ground and only worry about getting it running. And the suspension stuff is stuff you totally can do and you'll feel a sense of satisfaction by having done it. Check it off the list. It's a reasonably priced. You check it off the list, right? And then you've got that confidence and enthusiasm and momentum going into the harder project of figuring out how the wiring on the engine stuff works, right? But you've moved it along, you're feeling good about it, it looks better, it it works, it, and like this, all right, this is good, it's coming along. Now we'll move at a little harder project. I think run and move make will make such a big difference because then you can move it out of the garage if you have a emergency tire change or something like that, and then you, and then your, the people you surround yourself with, meeting your spouse, will sh feel like you have made progress in something mm -hmm. that you can uh, say that I that it now runs and drives ish, yeah. right? 
Mm-hmm. Movable is, yeah. but movable has double definitions. Movable can be, I can now push this in and out of the garage at will. <laughs> but, Reasonable. But fortunately, he doesn't have a, a hill like we do. Uh, yeah. Also, he doesn't have a, lo- uh, his spouse is lovely, probably not as willing to push cars as I am. So, um, it all I mean, becomes... you can hook a toe strap to the back of the Miata. And just yeah. pull it. It's a Civic. It doesn't weigh anything. Yeah, yeah, okay, oh, fine. Uh, and fine. I, I love if you're you into 67 that... Cadillacs, it's a little harder. Yeah. Yeah. Fine. I, I love that you think it hasn't happened like that already. But yes, uh, but also, you know, when, hey, you know, uh, you're, you, you become less resentful of, all right, I got to do a tire change on the real car. Or uh, as Pat Carity, who was on the show months ago, you know, uh, you know, we had the Honda Odyssey. It needs love. He was able to back the Corvair project out of the garage, put the Odyssey in there, then roll the Corvair back in or drive it back in, depending on what he was working on right there. And so that also, it it keeps Ford momentum because it is less of an obstacle now. And it yes, is more yes, of, yes, yes. you've got the end pieces all the way around on your puzzle. And now you're, uh-huh, you're just looking for anything. Puzzle. You're looking for anything with the dog's eyeball because there you go. And <laughs> you know, focus on that one little thing. And uh-huh. During 2020, uh, like we got on a puzzle kick and that's what Vicky and I were doing oh, for. It's hits we, home then. Yeah. We, we, we put together probably a dozen puzzles and we would work so on them. We, we got they annoyed. were called a trailer and a boat. And yeah. A Z. <laughs> <laughs> yep. and, yep. Yeah. But you, you do the end pieces and then you would start looking for, okay, here's all these little pieces that have this orange on it. And, uh, you'd walk by it with a cup of coffee in the morning and, and fiddle with it for a little bit and then go do something else and come back to it. But it was, it was the ability to constantly make progress. And the more that that picture got filled in, the progress came faster and easier and it was remarkably satisfying, you know, cause it would accelerate. Mm-hmm. And I'll, I'll add on to that. You need to make regular progress on it. Even if it's a half hour, and you do one thing or part of one thing, do that. Or figure one thing out right. and then, then you stagnating. have a, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah, that's okay. As long as you're, it, it doesn't matter. It's like, I don't have many, I don't have much time. If you have a half hour, do a half hour job, which don't do the big exactly one. Exactly what Pat told us when he was on the show. Uh, my little trick on that one to try and keep me on target is usually I have the, this, the sheet on the front windshield taped up of, the last update or something I did on it or that sort of thing. This particular one, I have three sheets, uh, fuel. Do you have a whiteboard in your garage? I, I do. Okay. Uh, I, Sorry. I didn't interrupt. I don't know, but that's, that's another one, but I have fuel spark and compression, uh, sheets that, you know, each with steps of things that I need to resolve. Uh, and then this, you know, now I'm going to add the one for suspension on it, you know, to get it to actually break and move and stop. Uh, it's I because I, I and the reason I'm suggesting that for you first is I know it's totally in your skill set and wheelhouse to do all that stuff, and you have all the parts to do it, or you have a lot of the parts to do it. The rest are just rock auto stuff, mm-hmm. and then it's like, all right, that's done. Like that's great, and you've inspected underneath. Like, and then maybe you do while well, it's up. All right, then you're gonna make sure you got that fuel pump there, and that it's the right fuel pump. Okay, great. You're gonna look, make sure the fuel lines are all together. You're gonna get that shift linkage on. And also, Which I feel like well, it's up. everybody's got their own way to organize, but your fuel spark uh, compression is, or air, whatever, um, pages may feel daunting. And if you're breaking it down a little bit more to this, like, make it move, make it drive, it's not like... But so, because sometimes when we make, we have a, a whiteboard, it's not huge, but sometimes it just says, like, make it run or like <laughs> build cage, cage. Motor swap. And yeah. and we do that Take exhaust from scratch, yeah, but we yeah. like, and we do that knowing that there's many parts to it. And it's just kind of a thing that we can check off. And Chris already has it in his head of what, how that's going to look. But if you are looking for that, that list, to, and if you're a checkoff person, make the list, right? Don't just say, make it run, but lay out all those things. Like, did I look at the fuel, the fuel pump? Did I inspect these different things? Cause then you can check it off. And then it's not, it's all towards this one goal of just make it run, not like upgrade it and make it great. And like, you're not making it the race car that you want it to be, but you're getting towards these littler goals that you can feel that you can feel better about. And it's not like your regular progress. Sometimes when we go out or I go out and look and say, okay, what's on the whiteboard, everything, like if it says, make it run, 
I don't have time to make it run. So maybe just if you need those littler goals, you know that you just keep the the engine parts or the compression paper. Don't keep it on the on the windshield. Put it on the whiteboard. Put it on the wall. It needs to get done. But if you want to have those littler projects that you can feel good about and you can say, yeah, I checked over these five things because I had a half an hour. I didn't get too dirty. I didn't have to put a whole lot of blood, sweat and tears into it or thought into it because I didn't have that time. If you're breaking it down, I feel like you might be better to be able to make more regular progress. Yeah. I've got 30 minutes. Oh God. Oh God. There's so much that needs to be done. Oh, wait a minute. There's a 30 minute job right there. I'll steal one thing from garage here is that I like that they do. They put a bunch of pieces of tape on the car, blue tape, and they write on them with a Sharpie, a job. And then when it's done, they take that piece of tape off. Because but they can't they be have so many cars that they, they, need, run. they can't just have one whiteboard, right? <laughs> That's <laughs> so, true. And they do have one whiteboard with like ultimate, like bigger but, projects, but yeah. they have to be littler projects than make it run. Yeah, no, that's, yeah, you know, you like, yeah, having a, when you first start out having a 277 point checklist to making it run is daunting. Having a seven step process, make run, make stop, make move, make drive. That's digestible. From those, from those, you break it down. All right. I'm going to concern with this one first. Mm -hmm. All right. What's my breakdown of this one? Let's start there. Yeah. And you're, and, but see, this is important knowing your goals here too. If your goal is to just getting it running and working to see how it goes is very different than the uh, forever car in the quality of work that you're right, going right, right. to do. And like, I'm running into this with the civic, I'm doing really good quality work, but not like professional restoration quality work. And I'm having to hold myself back. Like, no, I don't need to do that good, but I want to do it to a certain standard because I like it. And I, well, I, you, I don't know you, what I'm going to do reputation. with the car. I have no goal, yes. but I this is I just want this to do. This. As you tell everybody, hey, have that goal, and you're like, oh, that is it. But okay, I don't really have a goal, but I just know I'm going to build a car to a standard that I find satisfying. <laughs> well, I, but that, that that falls into that's why you have the plan. You know, the super quality restoration MG level thing. You know, sure. Uh, I, it, I I freely said this. I'll embarrass you again. Uh, you know, how much time did you spend getting that Mercedes straightened out before you sold it to me? Because, uh, yeah, this is going to my buddy, man. I don't want to be that guy. And you, yeah, you know, you guys lost a small fortune on that anyway, but you went through and, and then you had to go through it again because you got the, uh, uh, was it the misfire code on the, not misfire. It was, um, the cam lobes or something wasn't aligned after you went and did all 24. I don't even remember 32 wasn't valves, bad, but yeah, whatever. Yeah. You know, that but wasn't it, that bad. it was something you had to go through and, and reset yeah. on there because, you know, but you know, so it is, it's the, you know, quality versus, you know, especially when we were in our twenties, you know, Oh God, I start my car with a screwdriver. I should get a really nice screwdriver. Yeah, there we go. Okay. <laughs> I feel much better about starting my car with a screwdriver, you know, but you wouldn't send or that when to we your then- friends. Didn't didn't miss. I think that is what how ours ended up anyway. Anyway, yeah. we got a, we got a whole lot of bullets right here. Of what are, what are we supposed to be looking at when you're trying to well, line up your fi- figure out list. what it what it is. What are you next? And mental said this it's to make it. It's got to can it be movable? Can it run? Can it stop? And then can it finally can it drive? Yeah, you know, all those things and and go through it. But it goes has to go through with the level of quality that you want it to be. Like for example, it's like oh, I need hoses. If it's I just want this to run and see what I got. Use what you have. If it's, no, I want this to be a track car when it's done. It's like, all right, well, I need a new hose. Go get your new hose. And that's why uh, I suggest a list of parts that you need. Like as as you're coming across them in the garage, don't think I'm going to remember all these parts I need to buy. Not a chance. That's what, that's what the whiteboard board is for. Because then you, when you're done at the end of the night or the end of the weekend, you take a picture and then you, you deep decompress with in front of the fire with a, uh, with a beer and say, yeah, I did a good job. Let me just go cart uh, parts shopping. Yep. And get your rock auto 5% discount code and go buy all the stuff you need. (laughs) And And if you don't have a rock auto 5% discount code, when Chris goes through our contact uh, methods, text us because we almost always have them. Pretty much. Yeah. Someone. Yes. Or just actually just Google rock out or discount code. And you'll find one somewhere on the internet. Oh, Someone's yeah. posted even, it. even better. I usually post mine up on GRM and in our 
which is anybody can find. There's always a there's a thread of anybody got a current rock out or discount code, and it keeps getting refreshed when people got their current yeah. codes. That's a fantastic idea. Yeah. We should link that <laughs> in our show notes. GRM thread on GRM. That's perfect. Yeah. Yes. All right. All right. So mental hot now. You're the one with the with. This is exactly the, what I was going to ask. Puzzle. Yes. <laughs> Chrissy, ask the question then. Oh, how are you feeling? What is your plan? What is, what are you going to take away from this conversation? So, uh, you know, going, going into the, going all the way back to our December episode, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm all right. I, I got to start clearing stuff off the plate, clearing stuff off the plate. You know, I'm, I'm tired of holding on to useless things because I think they have potential and they don't. And this car has now moved out or, of that on. category. They might have potential, they but might have not potential. for you at this point in your life. There there's a, there's like a, a moon a trailer, difference. like a moon right. trailer. Yes. Just kidding. There's a difference. No, no. It's just, it's, this, this is just Valid. not for me right now. Right. doesn't mean you weren't right that it has potential and doesn't mean therefore it's trash. It's just, let's move it along to someone okay. who thinks it has yes. potential. It's, it's, it's um, an important differentiator. Or sometimes it really is. This is trash. I'm going to throw this away. <laughs> <laughs> there's a like difference. A, like a moon trailer. Yes. Yes. Trailer was, but you know. if you can sell the moon trailer for actual money <laughs> and not like just took five beers, five right. beers, not a six pack. Right. It, was two, five it, pack. Was, it was two 12 packs. All right. It was regular Dos Equis and Dos Equis Amber. Right. Yes. And if, honestly, I still feel like I ripped those two guys off. Probably. Yeah. <laughs> People don't know terrible. what we're talking about. This is not the moon trailer. Not, Different, not, not, very not quickly, moon Metal, trailer. Metal once sold a, a minivan that almost that didn't run anymore. Was on, like, in the middle, kind of on fire. In the middle of what's Alabama or something uh, like that. For, for yeah, the case northern, of northern Louisiana. Yep. No, yeah. no, we, yeah, because uh, we just left Talladega. Yeah. Alabama. Uh, so it was Alabama. Yeah. You were in the parking lot of a Texas roadhouse when it just gave up. And there you go. Anyway, story for a different day. <laughs> Ask us what we'll, have to, we'll have to dig up that, that car. Was, that was that wow. was what it was worth. It really was. <laughs> yes. It was. Yes. Six so, beers. Yeah. Uh, beers. You know, having gotten out of my own head and reached out on that. Yes. I, you know, I'm, 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 I'm feeling this is doable. Now the immediate goal uh, is to have a like fun, goofy, relatively simple anvil esque. Uh, Cause I, I've also, I've seen these Integra swaps back in the day. That was always the joke back in Oklahoma was, you know, thank God they make Acuras. Otherwise we wouldn't have any CRX upgrade parts. Uh, so there's, you know, just a and lot of fun. Integra is Japanese for parts car. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, and I, you know, I think, uh, yeah, I think the car will be actually, you know, a lot of fun. And then when it's, when it's running and driving, uh, then, you know, figure out what the next phase of it is. But, you know, once it's running and driving and if I can actually try and figure out a way to get some plates on it, you know, now I've just got a thing that I'll, I, I'll, it'll hang out here. I'll take it to autocrosses. I'll run it to work every now and again, you know, just to keep it circulating and moving. And, uh, but it, it don't, it no longer feels like a weight around my neck as I am trying to simplify my life. If anything, it is giving me the same feeling that I've simplified everything because I have a plan of action and a course to go through. And it is not daunting. It is not intimidating. And it's, it's, I don't even think it's going to be that expensive and just laying it out, knowing what I have, knowing what I need and knowing what is next in the steps on that one it and those times if you walk into your garage and you're feeling overwhelmed and it you 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 get a you know a, a sense of anxiety or doom to the point where you just walk back out that car no longer does that to me uh, so it's well uh, that is great that that a discussion could make you feel that way that's wonderful mm -hmm. you know the everything that we talked about you know the discussion the organization the preparation analysis and then laying out of a plan uh, just made me feel a whole lot better about taking on and, and tackling this project. And ideally, if you're listening to this episode, it's going to do the same thing for you. I think those small goals are huge because there's so many nights when Chris is like, okay, so we've got a half an hour before we record the show, or I've got an hour before I need to do this, but I can't, I'm not, I, I don't, I can't get covered in paint or oil or something like that. What can I knock out for a little bit and walking out to a project and you're just like, you know, put engine in. You're like, oh, okay, I can't, I can't do that tonight. Mm -mm. I think small steps are helpful. 
and, and it even it gets you off of the couch too you know you're sitting on the couch and okay there's another rerun of big bang theory which apparently is on 17 channels at any given time and you could stay there and do that or oh god you know there's this giant mountain of stuff to do in the garage but you're like i, I could watch this show or sit on my phone or you know what i know i've got a half a dozen things i could go out there you know that i don't have to get dirty nasty smelly hot cold whatever and you know i would make progress and then you end up you feel better about how you spent your off time. Totes. Mm -hmm. All right. Yep. So thank you, Chris, again. That was, uh, it was uh, not just for this episode, but for Saturday. Cause yeah. And uh, hopefully, you know, this thing gets that was a great way to spend an hour of my time is saving <laughs> you weeks of frustration basically and getting oh, you, you on are, target right you are you also are not... just sending things to the trash which is yeah, literally like, where you are headed is, like why is this fuel tank in this car i don't even know what the hell this fuel tank is why is it you have a fuel tank that's not the right fuel tank trash that and you're like oh great i don't have to put a fuel tank no no but not fantastic. trash the whole car which is where we started this conversation so Almost. right but oh. being able to reduce the clutter too uh, on yeah. that one. now now because trash some was, things not the important yeah. things Tr today was bulk trash day now my <laughs> trash company's top not very happy with chris but i'm very happy with chris because i was able to get rid of a lot of just crap that does not go to this car and that you know it now because it, initially it was like you know here's a puzzle you know i think it's of a honda <laughs> but there's some other puzzle pieces in this box and the box isn't really labeled that much. And I dumped ah. that out and I'm trying to solve that puzzle. And by being able to go through going, not one of the pieces, not one of the pieces I've now reduced, you know, why the, is there this picture of a dog in this puzzle? This is a picture of the forest. Why is there? What? Yeah, what? Don't, so don't forget that some of this is emotional. Any product is Very emotional. Much. And you Ooh. need to have that in, in consideration with what you're doing. And that, yes, this might not be the most important part of the car to do, but if it's a victory you're going to get that gets you momentum and keeps you going, worth it. Mm. Don't necessarily tackle the hardest thing first. Tackle something you're going to be able to get done that's going to be a milestone. That's why I suggest you like make it move. Mm -hmm. Like movable is better than non-movable. Even if you have to put it up in the up on Jack Sands again, at least you know I can just put it right down and it's gonna move and it's gonna be fine. Yes, 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 yes. Like mm -hmm. milestone. Good. Oh wait, I have brakes and they work. Fantastic. Doesn't matter if you're gonna use them anytime soon. You know that when it runs, you're gonna get that satisfaction of it. When it runs, you know what? I can back it up in the driveway and stop, and then I can put it back in first and drive it up in the driveway and it's gonna stop again. Oh my god, like that's again emotional <laughs> victory. So keep those in mind when you're doing stuff. Don't just go and like, I have to take the entire thing apart and go explode and then put it all back together. That's that's tough. You have to you know what going into it. That's what you're going to do. So keep mm -hmm. keep the emotions in mind. Absolutely. All right. Round cool. the horn. I think we done done a car show. We're, we I'm done. stealing Ian's line because I was hanging out with him. But yeah, you know. Oh. <laughs> We did that. That, yep. was, that was fantastic. If you need help identifying one of your mystery cars, can't promise we'll know if you get a hold of us we'll we'll help you identify it or send, send we might picks. know a facebook group to point you at <laughs> oh no he's got to go up and get his speaker on that yeah just like well that. he had to go into a different room to get it so oh all right okay fair enough okay um, well he's getting a speaker yeah i feel like it's time for just He's not even here, Tip. Tip, tip, tip. Yay. Okay, okay. Yay. Yep. This is Chris going to give this one. Yeah. All right. So here's the thing. Um, a heated garage is a wonderful, wonderful thing if you live anywhere in the Northeast, right? Or in anywhere, not in the Northeast, anywhere it's cold. Heated Fine. and insulated. You can have yes. heat, but you can't, you can't necessarily keep it in like one of our friends. So heated and insulated. True. Thank you. Yeah. There are lots of kinds of heaters. They're, they're, some of them are better than others. We happen to have one that is a well-mounted natural gas flame heater. It's meant to be an indoor heater if you live in a house that is not very well sealed, which is fine for a garage because the garage doors never seal up perfectly, so it's okay. So it is. it actually is wonderful. It heats the garage up very quickly. It's, it, it uses very little gas for how much heat it gives, like, um, it's wonderful, but it is an open flame. And there have been twice now that I have had problems with the fact that it's an open flame. 
and what that does. One is anytime I have gasoline fumes, like if I crack open a gas line or something and a few drops spill and the gasoline fumes get in the air, those fumes will burn in the open flame of the heater and it smells terrible in the garage, like it's bad. We found out the second one of those this weekend is that- Hate fumes. But this is not a latex paint. It's not like a water-based, you know, household nice paint. No, this is an enamel, like this is for tractors. This is this is the real shit. Thick stuff. Yep. Mm -hmm. the, so when those fumes uh, are coming off of the paint as it's drying and outgassing and are burning in the flame of the heater, even just the pilot flame, which is tiny, it created a pretty bad smell through that eventually Our permeated into the whole house. house. Oh, wow. It was so bad. I was like, <laughs> we're dying. I have the vent fan on the, on the, above the stove. We have candles burning. It smells in our bedroom. It is. Well, cause we have a, a forced air heating system in our house. So any, permeated. anything in the house spreads through the whole house. So even just a little bit coming in through the garage, you know, the seams of the garage door and where, you know, the gas line goes through from the basement was enough to get just enough that over a lot of time, a couple of days, it, it, it really became a thing. So <laughs> yeah. like so, inside my car that has pretty good seals on well, it. Your car is in the garage. Yeah, but it, it's got good seals in it. It just like, you know, it smelled in there too. It smelled everywhere. Kind of still. Yeah. If you look for it, you can still smell it in some things. Yeah. So that's now, how bad it was. So when, when yesterday we painted the inside of the second coat of the inside of the car, two of us pretty thorough coat. After I had the heater on in there during the day because the car had it's been like a week, so it had it was dry. Also, nothing dried the first time. I don't know if that was the heat. Well, that's because the... that's because how cold it was. Because yeah. I was in that balance of I want it to dry. I need the heater on. The more the heater's on, the worse it smells and the yes. worse it so is. So nothing dried. Everything, a lot of things right. were tacky for so like days. it took days. a long time because it's cold because the, the paint doesn't dry in the cold. That's how paint works. Rolling so anyway, my eyes. This time I heated, once the heat paint was, paint was all dry this time, I heated the garage up nice and warm and then we painted it and then it shut the heater off entirely, shut the pilot off, everything off. And today there is zero smell in the house. It's better. Yes. Yeah. So anyway. Be careful about <laughs> what fumes you may have in a garage that has an open flame heater of any kind, because it's going to be different than you think. Anyway, that's our just the tip. My house doesn't smell too bad. I, I remember because I we had a we had an attached big attached garage in Colorado, but um, nothing was over the garage. It just had like its own part. Well, neither's ours. We're just neither's ours. It. But there 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 were a couple of times when yeah, like Vicky would be like, "Oh God, what did you do in there? This house has smelled for two days." Ah, so, this was yeah. unlike unlike things. This this smell wasn't like you cooked bad shrimp or something. Like this was. It was. It was pretty. It was. It wasn't like overwhelming, but, but it, it was, was there. But it was, it was also bad. chemically, so it yeah. wasn't like you just. Yeah, it wasn't like it was bacon that you smell. But it was. Yeah, it was or, a lot. You well, if it was bacon, you know, pounds people would paint that all the time. Yeah, you know. Agreed. <laughs> Let's tell Rustoleum you should smell this. Okay, should smell like yeah. bacon. Rustoleum, if you have bacon smelling paint, yeah, that's a billion Sold. dollar idea. Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> That's oh, our just for the just Great. the tip. So we've killed this show. Yay! Uh, what's going on next time? Unfortunately, listeners, Chris and Chrissy are not available next week. We could not get our schedule to sync up despite our best efforts. So you have to prepare yourself for a pair of baller ass guest hosts because it's going down. I'm yelling Tim Burr and pantless matt burritas from ramwick park and sorry for party racing oh are going to tell you how to make the most of your non-racing time while you're at the track grab those speedos and your inflatable zebras it is going to be unapologetically rocking oh my gosh i can't wait to are you ready <laughs> for champagne showers oh my gosh and if you're not <laughs> drinking while while this show is on you should probably save it until a time that you can drink because it's uh, going to be yeah. amazing yeah. they those are those are 
top notch people from a pair of top notch teams. And yeah, it's we're gonna have a great time. And top lot top notch racers. Yeah. yeah. All around team owners. Mm-hmm. Great folks. We love them. Sorry we're gonna miss it. Oh well. Have fun, guys. We know you will. And hey, thanks for downloading us. We hope you enjoyed this week's edition of Everyone Racers. We're going to hope you're going to join us in driving, racing, building, and puzzle solving because everyone can be a racer, even you. If you enjoyed this podcast, subscribe. It's free. You can go to iTunes or wherever you get your podcasts and give us that five-star rating that's just so sweet. Don't care what you thought. Five stars and tell us why. Questions, show ideas, comments, emotional outbursts? Drop us a line anywhere we have things, which is pretty much everywhere at Everyone Racers or everyone.racersgmail.com or text mental. He loves to get surprise junk pictures, 484-243-0455. So that's about it. Thanks again. Until next week, keep the shiny side up unless you're just surrounded by plastic tubs full of random greasy parts. Then just do the best you can. Follow our advice. Keep those wheels down.